chemistry students, here we are to the final section of the chapter on pure substances. And what is it we need to know or we want you to know about pure substances? Well, yes? Well, they're definitely different from mixtures. There's a very Thank clear you. difference. Yeah. There, and what is that difference? Um, they're only made of certain things put together in a certain way. Oh, okay. So we're not putting several different kinds of matter together. Well, it's not a physical. Mm, it's, not a it's, not, physical. it's not like stuff sitting in a bowl just next to each other. Right. Like fruit cocktail. Right. Kind of stirred up. Yeah. So now there's, we're going to put things together and the components, as opposed to the fruit chunks in fruit cocktail, now our components are elements, the simplest form of matter. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a lot with elements. Uh, you'll be looking at characteristic properties of elements and so on. So we're not going to go into too much detail here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about compounds. And we think you probably know some things about elements already. Right. So a compound then, is still a combination of matter, different kinds of elements, but now it's put together in a different way. And, yes. and how is it put together? They're actually bonded together in a, in a very <laughs> specific way that produces something totally new. And we kind of talked about this in a different presentation, sort of. <laughs> um, they're bonded together. So you have two or more elements that have somehow been joined. They've, they've been chemically bonded together that produces something new, um, which is totally different from mixtures. Right. Now, sometimes uh, compounds look like mixtures. They may look like a homogeneous mixture, or really a homogeneous mixture may look like a compound because it is uniform throughout. But we can tell them apart because of their composition and this idea of definite composition. Yes. All compounds have have a very unique recipe. For example, water. Yes. Water is always H2O. There's two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom, and when that happens, you get water. And it doesn't matter where that water comes from. It could be water that's frozen in the ice in the Arctic Circle, or water in the cloud over Chesterland, or water in your tears. It is still H2O. It's always the same. That's what we mean by definite proportions. Now, we're also, we also have in here in parentheses a key point, and that's a definite proportion by mass. So not only is it just always two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen to make a water molecule, those atoms have a specific mass, and they're always put together in a specific mass ratio. Just like um, when you make a chemical compound, maybe there's a little more flexibility in a recipe, uh, but when you're measuring ingredients to, for, to bake something, you're putting it together in particular ratios for a reason. Uh, well, chemical compounds are put together in even more specific ratios, and they're only put together in one way, and if it's put together in a different mass ratio, you have a different compound. With its own totally different properties. Just because water is always made of, for example, two hydrogens and one oxygen, it doesn't mean that hydrogen and oxygen can't combine in some other ratio. For example, if you took two hydrogens and chemically combined them with two oxygens, you'd get a chemical that will make you throw up if you drink it. If you wash your hair with it, it will turn it blonde. It's hydrogen peroxide, right. a totally different chemical, still made out of the same two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, but has completely unique properties and a different ratio of the elements that make it up. Right, and throughout this chapter, we're going to do several activities uh, and labs where you investigate this in more detail so you can see for yourself that these things are combining in specific mass ratios. And going back to what I think we mentioned in a different uh, screencast with that law of conservation of matter and law of conservation of mass. Um, compounds, because they, are, they contain elements that are chemically bonded, uh, you can't just like filter them. Right. You can't just, uh, you know, 
Use a magnet. Just stir a magnet around in there. It, it's much harder to get them to break apart. You have to actually use chemical reactions to break those chemical bonds, which may actually take several different steps to get the original elements back. And there's a lot more energy involved in those changes as well. So we, we look at uh, one of our pieces of evidence for a chemical change was heat and light given off because of the rearrangement of atoms and bonds being formed uh, and broken. We can look at that in reverse, trying to break apart those chemical bonds. So you need those chemical changes, those chemical reactions to get those, um, those elements back. Some people think that when you boil water, <laughs> the vapor that's coming off right. is hydrogen and oxygen. Oh. And it's absolutely not. If that was the case, then every pot of water we used for pasta would catch on fire. Right. And those chemical changes produce new substances. Those new substances might be elements. Right. They could be. They could be elements. Or they could be they could be smaller chemical compounds, right? right? When we when we burn gasoline in gasoline. our automobiles, we produce lots of different chemical compounds. Right. We get carbon monoxide, we get ozone, we get uh, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, some water vapor, um, and that's those are products of the chemical reaction of burning gasoline. And we can tell that that change has happened because of our car is running, the engine's heating up, there's that combustion going on yep. within our car's engine that allows us to drive around wherever we want. Like say we wanted to go to a friend's house to study some more chemistry. And we hope that that's one of the things that you're doing as you're working your way through this chapter. Thanks for watching.